Okay, this is Ernie, Las Vegas retired, back on the studio. The uh, video ended when I was uh, opening these FLIR 91s and uh, telling you the stories about Jim Fergosi and stuff, so I'll name that last one. Oh, I'll put Jim Fergosi 1 and then Jim, Jim Fergosi 2. Is, uh, I was thinking of something, and then uh, my wife said something, and I forgot what it was. Something that ah, I think about it. Hey, there's Cubs again. See, here we go. I was telling you some the story about the guy that was waiting for the Cubs to win the World Series. And they did, and he died. So, anyway, and it's Boyd, we're continuing these, opening these up. And when this thing gets too hot, camera, it'll stop. Okay. Oh, I was going to get my... Mel Hall. Yeah, these are real cardboard, old-fashioned cards. Big fun. No fancy panini, or prism, or none of that stuff. Oh, okay, this is where that ended. That's what I was trying to think of. And then I got started in the studio. Wife didn't realize that I had... I was I know there was a part of a story about Jim for oh the the Phillies where he was manager of the Phillies and they won the World Series so I actually oh yeah I know this, what the story was I learned how to not step in the bucket from Jim Fergosi in person when I was a little kid about 10 or something and uh, Mark Gray is keeping that one. And uh, anyway, after that I grew up, I was a good hitter because of that. And in my senior year in high school, which uh, we moved to Oklahoma to a small, went to a smaller school, Mustang High School in Mustang, Oklahoma, the Mustang Broncos. And that was fun. And anyway, I was the league batting champion. Had a 447. Was offered a full baseball scholarship to uh, Southwestern State, Oklahoma, something like that. They were the Bulldogs, uh, a few miles west of Mustang. But I already joined the Air Force. Uh, Nobody in my family was really interested in my, what I did in sports. I was the oldest child, so they were just excited to, that they finally got rid of somebody, one of us. Out of five boys that were living there total. That's just the way it goes. And if I would have, and I was bitter about that the whole time I was in the Air Force that I missed a baseball scholarship because I loved baseball. I still love, yeah, I still love baseball. But uh, so I didn't have enough sense to uh, know that the Air Force job was like the best job I ever had or I could have got out on uh, if I would have thought I needed guidance you know when you're young you need guidance from people and I could have got out of the Air Force and used the GI Bill and pretty much picked a college to go to I didn't realize that after you're if you're 22 
Brooke Jacoby beating Incavilia. Holy cow. All good players there. If you're 22, you're not too old to go to. I didn't know there was a guy later on in Florida State. He won the Heisman Trophy. He was 26 years old. He had gotten out of the service. I forgot which one. And uh, walked on Florida State, I believe it was. And, uh, sh you know, that's what he did. He just walked on and became the quarterback. Omar Vizquel. And then he got the Heisman Trophy. I mean, you don't know what his, you know, it'd be interesting to read a book about him. His story, if I could remember what his name was. I wasn't thinking about all that, but later on, and then my my GI Bill had run out, and anyway, had gotten married, and you know, life happened. But anyway, yeah, it'd have been nice to realize that when I got out of the Air Force. that I could actually just pick the college I wanted to go to say you know can I play baseball you know find out first maybe try out because I while I was in the Air Force when I was in upstate New York I tried out for the Blue Jays Toronto Blue Jays I went to a tryout so this is a good story went to a oh just a general tryout in Utica, New York. That's what it was. And then I was invited to an invitational after that with just a few people in Syracuse. Oral Hershiser. Holy cow. Anyway, uh, it was an invitational and there was just pitchers and a few, you know, position players and Oh, you got the bat. I got the bat a bunch of times. I was end up being like two for four. Stole a base, and I played third base. Got to play third. That was the position that I liked. And, uh, anyway, uh, so that was neat. And I borrowed some guy's glove. I was still in the Air Force. Borrowed friend's glove, and it was a shitty glove. But uh, caught a hot line drive, and was complimented at the end of the tryout. The only one that was accepted though was the catcher, and I was lucky enough to uh, be, you know, be down at third. I played every time. Catcher threw a guy out at third. Perfect shot. Anyway, they kept him and then. Uh... Oh, I remember one time I struck out. The catcher's the one that called balls and strikes. And uh... anyway, I said something to him about it. You know, bad bad call. He didn't. He just looked at me like he was, you know, pop my head off. But... But he was a damn good catcher. I don't know who he was. He'd probably end up being famous. Chet Lemon. But uh, at the end of it, they said that, you know, they were keeping the catcher. And there were, the, yeah, there were some guys that followed that tryout thing. They just. I don't know, that's all they did, I don't know how they did it. But anyway, the, I got complimented, said the manager, I don't even know who he was, the coach, whoever was trying this out, come over and complimented me, because, yeah, there was, I got a line drive about, knocked my glove off, I was like 
trying to act cool, but whew, man, it was hot. Some hot hitters in that bunch. But uh, anyway, so that's some advice. If you end up joining the service and nobody was paying attention to you and you were something you were good at. Use the GI Bill for to do what you want. And if you go to college using the GI Bill, okay, Randy Johnson, yeah, that, huh. That's a second year card. Yep, that's a keeper. I got a whole pile of keepers there. I might have to go through. Don Mattingly, there's another keeper. So that's the story behind Jim Fregosi teaching me not to step in the bucket. It's actually a kind of a big deal, you know, and then it was a big deal that he went to the Philadelphia Phillies and was the manager and they won the World Series. He deserved that. He was a good guy. And a bunch of the players that were with him, you know, when he was doing the batting instructional thing, whatever you call it. Jose Uribe, holy cow, that's, I think I put that in a pile of bad ones and this, his rookie card is worth a bunch. But, uh, anyway, so that's a thing, no, don't step in the bucket, that's a real story, and then end up winning the batting championship and I didn't get to play baseball every year or wherever because of yeah, it's a long story but uh, have to play sometimes So yeah, when you get in, into high school, you get to play every year because it's free, supposedly. But I worked ever since I turned, oh my gosh, I worked my whole life. I forgot I was a paper boy for seven days a week, four hours a day. Fernando Valenzuela, I like good old Fernando, Luis Soho, but you know, you're the oldest of five boys, it, and your stepdad is actually moving up the ladder in his job, the oldest is going to You gotta follow them around, you know. Always have to go some to a new area. Always repro reprove yourself in a new environment. Like where I went to kindergarten in Lakewood, California. I'd have been just fine staying there my whole life because of, I had a good reputation as a little kid. You know, the kid you grow up. That's who the people know, is the people that have grown up there the whole time. Bo Jackson, keeping that. That's a later Bo Jackson. Yeah, but anyway, you have to reprove yourself everywhere you go. I think it moved like five times all the way up to my sea. I went to... Antelope Valley High School for 
three years and actually was recruited by coach after playing baseball as a freshman by the sophomore football coach because they were that was a big school said Ernie ever thought of playing football I said no not really he said well we need a quarterback what do you think now said, yeah you know because I used to anyway yeah and then uh, I was nearsighted went home told the parents and my mom said well you're not wearing your glasses well so that didn't work out real good through a long bomb one time and yeah it was perfect and I was happy yay next thing you know the big blob was running the wrong way is running my way guess who made the tackle but that was fun. I didn't quit. And I was third. I ended up being the third string quarterback. But the other two quarterbacks were hurt all the time. So I got to play a lot. And we never lost. Never lost a game that I played in. And I played in. Of course, we had a good team. Well, I think we only lost one game. The whole year. We had a really good running back defense. But anyway, then my senior year, we moved to Oklahoma, Mustang, Oklahoma. And I didn't got there. I didn't play football. I wish I would have. They, they had a good quarterback, played baseball with him. Uh, Perry, uh, maybe I won't say his last name because maybe wants his privacy. But they, you know, there was a small town school, so it wasn't full of all these pro football player types, you know. But it was it would have been fun. I would have got to play something on that team. But I didn't realize that till. That's what kind of sold me on small towns was living there. Then that's why when I became a postmaster, well, I I worked to become a postmaster because I wanted to raise my my son, first son that was born when he was a year old. I was raised him up in the air and said, "I'm not raising you in the city." So, Louise Ferrer, holy cow, there's nothing there. And I started working to become a postmaster. I was a letter carrier in Kansas City. Ended up being for 15 years. Took me nine years to get a postmaster job. That's quite a story in itself. Because I fell in the white male category and it was a affirmative action which I don't I think affirmative action is actually a good thing it was kind of like feminism you know what I mean then you become then there's third phase feminism that makes it ridiculous so after nine years of Doing everything they said, night school, going, traveling, getting, doing everything. I filed a white male under 40 EEO. And they said, you can't do that. And I said, man, watch me, you know what I mean? So I did it, and then I did a couple other things, but just, I lost. But I, it was a good Good try. David Cohn. Heck yeah. But anyway, I lost. But it was about six months later after. See, I filed after 23 interviews. I didn't pay attention at all. And uh, this thing will probably go out. Got two packs left. Filed after 23 interviews. But anyway, about did 
and then a couple other things and then I lost and about six months later on my 25th interview which is two interviews later I got a postmaster job and then went to different small town post offices and my kids did good there and I uh, actually was in revenue was first in the district and second in the state of Missouri one office so anyway most people will tell you that I was a good postmaster customers first that's all that's the way it should be you know not like Walmart you think every freaking customer is a thief look just look around at all the cameras and checking everybody's receipts as you walk out like we're already all criminals Ridiculous. Okay, so it's still going. This is the last pack. Let's get through the last pack. Number two, Ruben Sierra. Ah, I got too many. A big pile of. And I'll go through them. Brett Saberhagen, one of my favorite pitchers. Nolan Ryan's my favorite. Okay. God bless everybody. I'll I'll make put Jim Fergosi and number two in the title on this one. I'll say something. God bless everybody. Uh, I need subscribers. Like, share, subscribe. I'll learn how to do better someday. Someday I'll show you some of my silver stuff. Okay, if this stops, it just stops. And look at that. There's a little all those sticker things the Mets that's funny that's where uh, that's uh, Nolan Ryan's I think they won the World Series with Nolan Ryan in something like 1970 or something and then he went to the Angels look at that that see here we go that's a sign Nolan Ryan's first team Nolan Ryan's second team and uh, that's it. So that's uh, see what I said. I said God bless everybody, and the Holy Spirit is always there. I got to get that phone. God bless you.